Hi, thanks for joining us on the Odgers Burnson One Question Vidcast. My name is Jules McKean. I run the media practice for Odgers Burnson Executive Search out of London. I'm delighted to be joined today by Wayne Davison. Hi, Wayne. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, Wayne. Wayne is the Chief Sales Officer and MD International of Little Dot Studios, which I'm sure a lot of you will know them. But if not, they're an award-winning digital content studio and media network operating across the UK, US, Europe and Australia. Joining Little Dot in 2016, Wayne's now responsible for global ad sales and paid media, growth of the new biz of the business's international footprint across Europe and APAC, and Little Dot's recently acquired social media reporting business, as well as supporting new business partnerships. And he sits on the board of Wing, which is Little Dot's sports part store sports branded content agency. Easy for you to say. I know, exactly. Um, prior to joining Little Dot. Uh, Wayne spent seven years at the Shine Group, which is now Banerjee, as Director of Commercial and Business Affairs. And before that, he held various roles at Fremantle and at MTV Networks Europe, where he watched music videos for a living when M when VHS was a thing. How it's lovely, it. Wayne. It well, was lovely. the heady days that we are now no longer in. Yes, um, indeed. It's, a, it's been a complex 2023. Um, and, you know, advertising headwinds, film and TV and the strikes, you know, Kind of subscription models under threat, advertising under threat. But are there reasons to be cheerful? Cheer us up today. I think it if depends on it's it's all about the lens on which you're looking through things. I think the um necessity being the uh, parent of of invention and innovation, I think the there's, there's it's quite an inter it's a really interesting time. It's been, as you say, it's been very challenging, but I think the um what what has kind of driven us to this point obviously the business growth that we saw pre and during pandemic and companies over inflating i think it's fair to say got a bit flabby salaries got mental over yeah. hiring and over resourcing um revenues were you know driving always up and to the right and i think everybody's expectations got a little bit crazy yeah and uh as uh, you know lots of people have spoken about the kind of great reset uh that has happened um, and is is still happening now is 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 kind of essential really, and I think it's changing the nature of the way people are operating and has has had as is kind of imposed necessity on on lots of these different companies, um, you know whether that's the platforms Google and Meta, you know as you say the broadcasters and a lot of the Avod businesses Roku obviously announcing kind of cha um, yeah. uh, changes there. The agencies are struggling because the advertisers are, are holding back money. And when they are holding it back, they're being more cautious about how it's being spent. So it's 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 required a massive reset. And I think it's it it perspective allows you to take a negative view of it. But I think the reality is what it's not starting to do is actually kind of really move innovation forward. And I think people are tr starting to try new things. I think the you know things like office in, uh, office environments are coming yeah. coming back. People are starting to spend more time together. Um, uh, I think op new operating models. I think people are testing new ways of working, which I think is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and we're starting to see that. And 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 what we see with a lot of our partners is is they're they're more willing to try new things in slightly different ways than they would have been before when they're a bit pro probably complacent in in um, seeing growth without really trying anything new. So I think mm -hmm. my my overarching kind of note on it would be that th this we haven't seen huge amounts of innovation over the last few few years, I think. And, and you know, people have been kind of comfortable in the spaces that are operating in. But I think that now things are shifting and changing. Um, I think there's real opportunity for um, for growth coming into probably into 2024. And it's going to take time. I don't think the, the, it's, you know, it's not going to be an overnight Thank God it's 2024, January 1st. Here we go. This is going to be great. There's going to be, it's going to take time for money to come back into the market. It's going to take time for um for that to feed into the to the wider industry. Um and and I think um and I think technology um helps support that as well. Um, you know, obviously lots of people are talking about AI and, and have spoken about how that's being used, given resources are slightly more limited. What are the new opportunities and the yeah. ways? Introduce that so i think there's i think there's just a lot of opportunity now um that has been imposed on everybody that were probably quite comfortable in the way they've been operating for quite some time 
It's interesting, isn't it? Because in a, you know, the assumption would be to, to your earlier point about being the mother of invention, but actually often in a downturn, people become more, much more risk averse. Yes. But I wonder if there's something quite, yeah, it, it does certainly can drive innovation from new players in the market. That's for sure. As you try to kind of work out how, how to get an edge. But I, I do wonder if you think that there's a unique set of circumstances when coming out of the pandemic, where, as you say, con particularly in, if you think about your worlds of kind of t TV and content and yeah. advertising together, yeah. the sort of, you know, the first of those went absolutely sky high in the pandemic because that's what we had to do as entertainment. Indeed. You know, and we I mean, were spending money elsewhere. And advertising, therefore, was kind of almost like falsely supported during that period for actually a kind of cost of living crisis. Is this a unique downturn in that sense that, you know, there's a sort of, there's a sort of, um, to your point, there was this odd bump that everybody got where you just assumed it was going to have this trajectory. But it's also paired, presumably also because of inflation, with a need to actually look at the bottom line, which people haven't really been asked to do for quite some time. Definitely. And the, and the bottom line has been masked for years, yeah. by growth of revenue. And I think that's that's definitely now now the numbers have started to shift. And I'm not going to pretend to be some kind of economic expert, but the, you know, the, the times that I'm spending with all of our, our different kind of divisions looking through budgets, trying to figure out kind of where that bottom line shifts. You know, we're not unique in this. This is this yeah. is holistic across the industry. The bottom line is no longer being hidden by this mental growth of revenue, and therefore that kind of need is is definitely shifted. And and I think it's really interesting. You know, lots of the partners that we work with on uh, Little Dot they they've been cautious about trying or pushing into kind of new areas and and doing things because they've been more comfortable with what they're used to and they're seeing lots of traditional revenues coming through that that process mm -hmm. and all of a sudden are like uh, looking at it with concern because those revenues are no longer growing they're actually then and their bottom line is is being affected so what are the new ways that we can we can try and innovate in this way and try and make um, new revenues from different environments for whether that's social or digital whether that's um fast channels or what, what, whatever that looks like it's it's the kind of it's it's created a, a scramble to to try things that they probably wouldn't have done a couple of years back because it was easier to not bother um so yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think also uh, sort of in the I suppose agency you're quite unique within the agency landscape but within the agency landscape at large we're going to see independent smaller companies starting to kind of group together or kind of groups starting to buy smaller companies who've, you know, were doing pretty well in the pandemic on their one service line, mm. but actually are sort of starting to, to run out of road. But because to your point about technological innovation, those are, you know, putting together a new data stack or a new platform is not an inconsiderable investment and actually bringing to get out kind of something we see sometimes in the investment space is I think some of the investors are getting smarter arguably I mean they're always very smart but actually looking at how the bits fit together in the portfolio and can share services than they would have done before I don't know if you see that I think it's really interesting I mean we've not I'm not seeing it directly in terms of the, those kind of indie agencies and consolidation at this stage, but it's going to get a bit hairy, I think, for a lot of these these smaller indies who have, you know, nicked amazing clients from uh, from some of the um, the big holding group agencies. But what has happened, what we're seeing quite a lot of, and we've seen over the last, particularly this year is a lot of promises of big budgets and big spending and not, none of that materialising. Yeah. And actually, uh, and what is materialising is being spent really cautiously in spaces that the clients are kind of comfortable with, but probably not really delivering the things that they really need it to, whether that's kind of buying in tradition, buying in linear traditional ways, uh, or sorry, buying TV yeah. audiences. From yeah, linear rather than focusing on kind of what does digital do. So, so consequently, I think the the indies, are, as you, as you point out, is that they're, they're definitely looking to find alternative ways to 
cover those gaps because it's a yeah. really precarious position for them to be in and that's that's not just one one of their clients that's all of their clients you know that that is happening with a couple of the big bigger indie agencies that we've been working with that money's being held back it's going to come in q4 it's definitely coming in q4 maybe it'll maybe it'll be 2024 now and so i think there will be a need for lots of those indies to start looking at consolidation yeah. And I think it'll yeah. be an opportunity for smart investors to 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 curate those businesses, as you say, together with different technology um, aspects that are probably slightly different to the kind of usual way of operating with um, uh, with ad agencies. But then, you know, you look at the consolidated businesses. You know, Sir Martin Sorrell came out re- um, this week talking about the problems that MediaMux has been having and um, all the changes there. So it's not it's not unique and uh, uh, it's not isolated. I think that's the reality. But that it is it is a minute for us to all kind of step back and and stop being complacent and stop doing things in kind of safe ways. And actually look at that innovation and opportunity to kind of drive in in uh, new directions, which um, which is the um, opportunities for positivity. I say. And finally, finally, as we go into twenty twenty four, is there is there one area of innovation in particular that you just go, we're going to see more of that, good, bad, otherwise, but we are just going to see more of it. Well, look, I think. Um, people are certainly in our business are starting to to use various forms of AI, and uh, you know it's it's yeah. all getting a little bit boring. And, and a as little... a lawyer, you'll be quite interested, I'm sure, about how passing my, off or whatever. Our legal, our legal team will question my legal abilities these days, so let's not pretend that that's a a, a good space for me. But I think the um, the the use of an innovation of AI across various different aspects of our business whether that's in the kind of in the content space whether that's in um building metadata for the the channels and and using using the likes of chat gbt or um, mid journey to create thumbnails and those kind of things through to our paid media teams which are using stack potentially using stacks of different ai formats to to um create to create ad um uh, create ad content if the content isn't available to, and to personalize it i guess and change personalize the it to be building targeting to be um supporting our planning teams and i think the the key is kind of it's a support tool if it's used and it's yeah. about using it correctly it's not you know the the, the great fear of there's going to be hundreds of people out of work because of uh, because of uh, robots taking over all of our jobs i don't see that i think what what it, this is and you know this is i'm not unique saying this this is this is a support team to create new methods and faster more efficient ways of operating across all of our different areas of all of our different areas of work but across the industry i think it's going to be a big change there um, and, uh, and i think that's that's really shifting and you know that's going to that's going to go through programmatic that's going to go through a whole a whole phase of different areas of business I, I, and to a certain extent, the non-generative side of AI has been with us for a long time, hasn't it? And it's, yeah. it's just, it's all kind of just come up, up a level. It's the um, it's Wayne, the we've unbelievably run out of time and so much to cover in such a short period of time. Awesome. Um, let's check in again in a year and see how your predictions have panned out. Um, very exciting. Thank you very much for joining us, Wayne Davidson. Thanks very much.